everything's fine because there's merch in the store. Yeah, <laughs> merch in the store. We're all stuck inside and we miss the outdoors. Wait, don't think about that. Stop thinking about that. I mean, what? I miss human touch. Merch in the store, new merch in the store. Yeah, I 100% this game the entire way except for Furret. I hate this creature. Get him away from me. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I got a lucky crit. What are you talking about? Hey, look, what's that over there? Ah, who am I kidding? I can't get away from my crimes against animals. After all, I'm not a multi-million dollar organization with a friendly sounding name. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, new and returning, young and old, dogs, cats, do I have any whales in the chat? Any whales? Have you seen that video of the guy who gets slapped by a whale? Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, I'm terrified of the ocean, but if I get molly whopped by a whale, I'm not complaining. That being said, I still wasn't able to play Subnautica for more than two hours in one sitting. That is horrifying! Why does he exist? Oh, ew, ah! Hi, buddy. How you do? Ah! But if you're new here, uh, why not subscribe? It's free, just takes a second, helps out the channel a lot. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. And who's on the chopping block today? Well, since my Shane Dawson video got demonetized and won't be promoted, I figure why not double or nothing gamble and talk to y'all about Animal Rescue. Yes sir, what should traditionally be a heartwarming genre saved for the viral corners of Mashable and Vox, and for the most part is, is also populated by an equally seedy underbelly of a network of channels that seek to exploit animals for views, for money, and then once they're finally called on their actions, simply change their channel name or make a new one. Now, what am I talking about? Well, all in due time. First of all, let me make a few things clear. I will do my best to illustrate my points, but I don't want to chance a demonetization. Because if I do that, the message doesn't spread. I will implore of you to take my word on it. I'll put as many sources in the description that I can. And second, it's important to understand that cats and dogs are not the only targets of this abuse. The senseless of animals is fetishized by such creators as SSO Young, whom you might have seen a video about by Critical or Mudahar, some ordinary gamers. But her whole premise is she tortures and eats squids and other sea life alive on her channel for mukbang content. And you know what's fascinating? She's cultivated an audience of almost 5 million people as of the recording of this video. From king crab to octopus, to animals from practically all corners of the ocean, and more. No one is safe from SSO Young. And say what you will about, oh, well, it's the same thing that happens in kitchens at restaurants. <laughs> yes, but there's a distinct difference between preparing food in a kitchen in a restaurant and practically gamifying it for an audience of millions. Actual millions. Her octopus video garnished 38 million views, and even her other content still dips into six digit views. There is a clear and sick dedicated fan base, and it's disgusting. But SSO Young's fame still makes her too much money, and it's a bit of a curse she can't just change her channel name and run away like other channels do. For instance, Puppy Love wasn't always called Puppy Love. But this channel blatantly stages fake rescues. Some channels are so brazen they don't even choose to change their names though, like Love Rescue Animals. And the disgusting thing is that all this content continues to stay monetized. These channels are normally marked by the repeated use of the same animals, even months apart. And it's sad, it's sickening to see the deterioration of these animals over time. But it's a toxic cycle of new channels shows up, floods their page with content until one particular rescue goes viral. Every other channel in this sphere attempts to hop on the same trend, mistreating plenty of animals in the process, until eventually the market quote-unquote gets saturated and they start the cycle all over again. And I say market quote-unquote because it's sickening to think of animals, creatures that have done us no personal wrong, sensationalized and gamified into dollar signs. Those furry ears are not just watch time on your video. It has a brain, it has a heart, it has a soul, for God's sake. And it's saddening that animal rescue content is, again, practically designed to go viral. I swear the YouTube robot sees any content with animals and says, Oh, pause? People like pause, give them that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good for the growth of real channels that have a positive message, but YouTube seems incapable of distinguishing the real from the fake and performative. 
These channels often start as content completely unrelated to animals, only eventually changing over, I'm guessing in an attempt to dodge the YouTube robot? Because I mean, if you start a new channel and immediately upload fake animal content, or at least content that is disgustingly fake and obviously fake to some, but that other people will hop all over, the robot will get suspicious. So what do you do? You fly under its radar for a while, maybe you create craft or design content, until suddenly, bam, kitten in a basket. Listen, the stakes are what matter to these people. The more dangerous the rescue, the better the chance for promotion. I mean, that goes in a lot of things. You see it in clickbait everywhere, but we're more emotionally inclined to be pulled towards animal clickbait than to Jake Paul opening $38,000 Pokemon cards. Well, that, that might not be true for me, but still, you get the picture. It's an industry of people that know exactly what they're doing, and they're out for the quickest buck possible. And like I said, after they're found, they even change their channel names to foreign languages or foreign names, Chinese, Russian, in order to fly under the radar of the largely English-speaking audience that hunts them down. But as long as we're on the topic of the good old USA, it's not just YouTube that these antics are restricted to. I wonder if you remember the video of some individuals running over and brutally beating a raccoon. Now the media seems to love to paint the fact that these were Black Lives Matter supporters, but I don't think that label particularly has a place here, except for in describing that they were trying to hide beneath it. Do not take a movement that is dedicated to the justice of an entire group of people and use it as a blanket to cover your heinous acts. They made some disgusting comments and practically taunted people to attempt to find them. However, when things started heating up, the original poster deleted the tweet and Twitter as a whole due to backlash, claiming later on Instagram that he found the clip elsewhere. As far as I know, there's no word on whether or not they received legal repercussions, but the fact still remains. Oh, but where else does suggestive content thrive other than TikTok? This is another topic that Mudahar talked about. The crazy cat lady on TikTok. Using multiple tags from the furry community, she spread her vile acts across not only TikTok, but Instagram as well, and sickeningly showed off so much to an audience of over 8,000 or more. And what's even worse is she advertised that she would go on Omegle and do these things live. However, this one has some kind of vindication at the end, because according to things that I found, she ended up getting arrested. But it's a testament to how fast these things can spread. And a sick attempt at this weird wave of normalization of these things. And speaking of sensation, how about we bring up Alinity? Oh yes. But Hotbox, hasn't she been cleared of all wrongdoing? One agency's clearance does not itself the perfect person make. And it's just as easy as putting on a mask for anyone. Look at every content creator, myself included. We all wear a mask of some kind. And somewhere there are holes for your eyes and for your mouth. And from it pours the essence of your character. So what's the original story? Well, during an Apex Legends stream, Alinity's cat walked in front of her. And frustrated by its presence, she yeeted him over her right shoulder. Oh, but upon being called on it, Alinity initially responded, I didn't think you guys would notice. Honestly, I thought I was fast enough that nobody would notice it. The cat flying around the screen? But I guess everyone did. No one would see it. Are you kidding? Listen, this is not Payday 2. It does not work that if no one had seen you do it, it would have been okay. Oh, but that wasn't the only thing she had to say. She invited people to report her, saying, I also understand the desire to report me to pet authorities and encourage anyone to do so if they feel pets are being mistreated by anyone, anywhere. Ooh, Alinity, so smooth, subtly shoving it off yourself, right? My animals are well-loved and live in a warm and caring home. Warm, like that vodka you baby birded into your cat's mouth. Oh yeah, there's a long list of Alinity problems. Alinity, I don't care what the Saskatoon SPCA had to say. Here's what I could dig up. Because it seems for all your apologies, there is still a continuous streak of things that needed to be addressed. So let's just go right down the list. Alinity knocked over the cat tower that her cats were resting on. Now, of course, cats have great reflexes. They jumped off, didn't seem to get hurt. However, it's nonetheless odd. And she didn't just do it once, she did it twice! Continually toppling your cat's resting place seems like you're treating it more like a toy than you are a pet. And why even mistreat those cat jungle gyms? Those things are like hundreds of dollars. My cat's little scratching post alone was 50. Oh, y'all remember the time that she gift-wrapped her cat? Not explicit physical harm, mind you, 
but it's never a good idea to restrict your pets against their will. And especially record yourself doing it, mind you. Ah yes, and here's the famous vodka clip. Just spitting burning alcohol into her cat's mouth. When even the slightest bit of alcohol can have major health complications for dogs and cats. But you know, warm loving home, right? Alinity also sat on her cat, twice. Look, I know there's an army of simps that would have traded places with that cat instantly, but that's not the point. The point is that even if we as adults can see that she's not applying incredible force, at least at first, it's a horrible thing to put online. Younger, impressionable people who find something like this funny might try to recreate what she did and actually end up hurting their pets. Oh, she also gives her dog the old Red Foreman treatment live and on camera. And we all know that clip of what that dog did to her rear end when she tried to do a handstand, but uh... Again, I can't show that, just know that she swatted the dog away with her leg. But where would I be if I didn't mention our favorite tyrants, PETA? Yes, the people for the ethical treatment of animals, who as of 2020 has a mortality rate of over 90% and continues to fail to suffer repercussions, PETA took a dog off the porch of some owners and ended up putting the animal down before a 12-hour time frame. So guess what kind of punishment they got for this? Was it jail time for the representatives? Was it an internal investigation and audit? Or was it a $500 fine and no real tangible consequence? Time's up, but I don't think you needed to think too long for that one. Rest in peace, by the way, Maya. Yeah, that was the dog's name, who was not running at large. She was just sitting on her porch and refused to leave it. It isn't relevant that Maya wasn't on a leash. She was on her own property. And they actively coaxed her off, throwing biscuits to her. And when Maya ran to avoid the representative, they entered the property and took the dog. Oh, you want to know something even more disgusting? PETA knew the dog belonged to the family because at least one of them had been there before. And what did they do after? PETA called the dog worthless and called the act not outrageous conduct. One of them even tried to argue that she couldn't be held liable because she didn't actually take Maya, she just drove the car. Well, guess what? There's a word for that, it's called accessory. But I'm guessing the only accessory that your privileged ass would know would be a Hermes bag. Oh, and they even had the audacity to ask if the Spanish-speaking person whose dog they stole is legally in the US. Oh, Pita, las cosas que quiero hacer tengo son legales. Disgusting! How do people sleep at night? Oh, but this isn't the only tale of Pita overstepping their boundaries. I'm sure you all remember an expose that they made about dairy farms. Well, the fun thing is that Pita attempted to get the farms shut down by joining the farm and actually participating in the horrific scenes themselves. Oh, but PETA's done their research to try and shut this fact down. They've made sure that they're all that show up on the front page of Google when you try to research this. They were also responsible for a whole campaign about wool, making it out to be much more violent than it actually is. Professionals often go to a shearing school to learn how to shear sheep properly, and in a way to the safest interest of the sheep. Now granted, it can cause mild anxiety, but nothing like the trauma that PETA tries to narrate. I mean, there's whole procedures to ensure that a sheep is calm during it. Sheep are even flipped on their butts to calm them down. And despite nicks, the razors never go very deep. It's similar to nicking yourself while shaving. And they're immediately treated with antiseptic sprays. Unsheared sheep not only run the risk of infection, but overheating. Sheep are often shaved after winter so that they're not overheating in the summer. And farmers let their hair grow out in the winter so that they stay warm. Sheep are sheared once or twice a year, depending on the breed. And what do they do in the rest of the time? Well, they're not suffering. They eat, they sleep, they poop. Actually living the life, little fellas. PETA also tries to spread a false narrative that docking a lamb's tail is harmful, when in reality it's necessary for keeping the animal clean. The docking or shortening of the tail is done shortly after birth as a way to help keep their derriere cleaner and prevent a painful condition called fly strike, which among other infections can be painful and potentially fatal. I could go on and on about everything that PETA is responsible for, but PETA bad isn't the sole message of this video. It's educating you, the viewer. So listen up, so here's some of the best advice that I can give you. Bring wild animals to rescue centers, don't just bring them home. Unless you happen to be a professional, 
because those kids can have diseases that you're not vaccinated against. Good example, bats. What do bats carry? Rabies. Makes you foam at the mouth and go hydrophobic like oil and water. Local shelters are always your best bet, so make sure to support them. But other good animal rescues include the International Animal Rescue. It works with exotic animals to rehome and rehabilitate them back into the wild if they can help it. The World Wildlife Fund, or WWF, also works with exotic animals. And they've earned themselves quite a prestigious reputation. And Tony LaRusso's ARF Foundation. It's a dog and cat shelter. They refuse to resort to lethal measures and have a reputation of being a great institution. They assist in rehabilitating danger dogs as well, at times. In fact, I have people in my server who live near a branch, and one of those individuals got five of their pets from there. All healthy and extremely well cared for. Oh, and make sure to prioritize your animal's care at home. No matter the size, big or small. Uh, my friend Cobalt Koi goes into a bit of this on their channel if you want to check it out, but I'll just give you a small clip. When I first saw this thing, Oh my goodness, I want to scream! You could put maybe three guppies in a 10 gallon tank, and the larger tank you get, the more fish you can have. The point is that for all the toxicity that there is in the animal rescue world, there's plenty of silver linings. We just have to work to amplify those. So how can you help? Well, other than donating and volunteering, you can like this video and share it around to help spread the word. It would be greatly appreciated not only to me, but I'm sure to all the other animals. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to let me know your experiences in the comment section down below. And let me know whatever you want to hear next. Whenever you're watching this, I hope you have a good rest of your day and an even better tomorrow. I love you. And before you say it back, look in the mirror and say it to yourself. I will see you in the next episode of Whatever I Make. And until then, this has been The Hotbox. Bye. Then I remembered I didn't want my intestines to look like a fucking swamp.